So there are uh, uh, several features of sound waves. Uh, if we diagram them here, they, there, there's um, a frequency and there's a fundamental frequency. Um, uh, when I speak, I, I have a sp fundamental frequency at which I speech, speak, which is probably uh, uh, 250 hertz or so. Um, and then, and then what, what we use to interpret what I'm saying is not only that uh, fundamental frequency, but also its harmonics, which are which are its uh, integral uh, uh, multiples of that frequency. So if I'm speaking, let's say I'm speaking at 200, uh, my fundamental frequency is 200 hertz. Then there will also be a fundamental frequency at 400 and 600 uh, and 800 and so on. Uh, and and speech is going to sound normal if it has all of those additional harmonics. And in general, the frequency of a sound is the sound, the fundamental frequency of the sound is the sound is, is related to the pitch that one perceives in that sound. It's related to, it's not identical to. It, it is, the pitch is also influenced by all manner of other uh, features. There is one cute auditory illusion that you can uh, do with this, which is that instead of playing the fundamental frequency, say 250 hertz, if you play all the harmonics, if you play 500 and, and uh, 750 and 1,000 and 1,250 and so on, then you will refer that uh, sound to 250. You will perceive that as a, um, as a sound that is at a pitch of, of uh, frequency of 250 hertz. Another uh, important feature of the sound stimulus is its amplitude, which is its, the, the size of, of, of this. It's its intensity, if you will. And this is related to, again, not synonymous with, but related to loudness. One thing that can change the relative loudness the, that, or the loudness that a sound is perceived at is the background noise. We already saw that. That's true with, uh, because of Weber's law. So you could have this, uh, this amplitude sound in perfect quiet. That's going to sound relative, moderately loud. But in a noisy uh, environment, it may not even be uh, uh, decipherable. Um, and finally, there's something called timber. There are other features, but these are the ones that we're going to think about, that I want you to think about. Timber is essentially the sound envelope. And it's the, it's the thing that allows you to, to say, oh, well, that's a, that's a middle C played by a flute, whereas that's a middle C played by a, a trumpet, or that's a middle C played by a viola. So it, the, the, the timber, the, the, the warmth, the, um, uh, the, the feeling of that, of, that, um, uh, of that note can differ according to the envelope. Now, what about the frequencies that we hear? The frequencies that we hear range from under 100 hertz uh, to about 20 hertz when we're born. About 20 hertz when we're born, at, right now, I probably hear up to 11 or 12 uh, uh, kilohertz. Did I say 20 kilohertz or did I say 20 hertz? Ah. 20 kilohertz, <laughs> 20,000 cycles per second, not 20, <laughs> 20 kilohertz. So we were born with 20 kilo, hearing up to 20 kilohertz. You progressively lose that as you age. Um, and this is, this is given rise to a couple of entertaining um, uh, and, uh, uses. So there are uh, people, students with, uh, cell phones that have a ringtone that's in the 16, 17 kilohertz range, 15 kilohertz even, uh, which they can hear, but the teacher, who's f quite a few years older than them, can't hear. So now they can get a call in, in class. Everyone, all the kids know it, but the, the teacher does not. And then the reverse uh, uh, comes where... Um, there have been store owners that don't want kids in their uh, store. And what they do is they blast out white noise at a very high uh, frequency 
um, that they can't hear, so it's perfectly fine for them, but it annoys the kids so they don't come by the store. We were, I was at a restaurant um, with people in their 50s and 60s, okay? <laughs> so so we're, we're, we're low. And we were trying to figure out what was the highest frequency that we could hear. And we were playing these, uh, on, on our phones, we were playing these uh, uh, samples of, of high frequency white noise at pretty loud, uh, uh, at, at a pretty loud amplitude. And, um, and after a while, the, there were a group of 20-somethings uh, at the table next to us, and they came over and they said, "Could you please stop that? You're torturing us." <laughs> so, so this is a this is a very real thing. You are going to lose uh, the top range of hearing as as you age. Um, and so the the normal hearing, we're gonna we're gonna concentrate at the low end where everyone who has good hearing can hear. So this is up to eight kilohertz, up to to 10 kilohertz. Um, conversation or, or speech, it, it takes, uses this range all the way from 250, all the way up to 8,000, but it's, it's concentrated in this, in this smaller area right here. And uh, so, so that's just to give you an idea of what this X axis is. And so um, in a normal, Person with good or a person with good hearing, what will, what you do is you ask them what's the where at what um, threshold at what loudness can you hear these different uh, frequencies, and so you're you're just sitting there with headphones and you're you're pressing a button and saying yes I heard that whenever you hear whenever you hear something and ideally it does not take it takes something on less than 10 dB to hear. Um, clicks at all of these different frequencies. And that would be done separately for the right ear and for the left ear. Um, but when a person gets what's called presbyacusis, presbyacusis, old man, presbyacusis, hearing, so old hearing, then now instead of taking, say, 10 dB to hear here, it requires 50 dB or 40 dB. And up here, instead of taking 10 or 15 dB, now it takes, uh, you know, now you have to be shouting. So this is a whisper, this is a conversation, is around 60 dB, and a rock concert is around 110, 120 dB. So now you're having, you have to shout to get this person to understand um, these uh, frequencies. And, and that's, that's what hearing loss looks like. And it looks, and what you can see from this, this is a typical, uh, what would typically occur with uh, presbyacusis is that it's much more severe for the higher frequencies. So we lose as we as we age, and if we get if we lose hearing as we age, we're going to lose primarily the hearing at the high frequencies, and these lower frequencies are going to be relatively intact. One of the reasons this is one of the reasons why men are easier to understand than women. Their their speech is shifted to lower frequencies than the speech of women. Now, what do you lose in speech? This is the full range, this is about the full range of what speech uses. But not all sounds are the same. When I say a ju, judge, or when I say a um, similar, this is much higher, that's a much higher uh, frequency than the ju. And in fact, People that lose their hearing, high frequency hearing, are going to have much harder time with certain sounds than with others. And these are predictable by the, 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 the frequency that those sounds are. I want to mention one other thing, which is that telephony, telephony, so being able to transmit the uh, human voice across telephones, um, they don't use this whole range. They use a very limited range. They use essentially what they can get away with, because as they as transmitting more frequencies is more expensive. It's it takes more, so they're giving you a limited range. And this is why, for me, it's much harder for me to talk on the telephone. 
It's much harder for me to talk on the telephone than in person for two reasons. One is I'm only getting a, a selection of the full range of the frequencies involved in speech. And the second one is that I don't have the nonverbal cues that I um, get when I'm talking face to face with a person. Um, and we'll go back to that. But it's a very important to understand uh, the, what is normal hearing and what is the typical loss of hearing that people have. Okay, so now we're gonna move on and we're gonna look at what the external ear does with incoming sound.